Critical thinking skills are incredibly valuable in today's world. We are bombarded by information. Phase, what we all face is really sorting out uh, the source of information, the accuracy of the information, trying to decide what information is noteworthy, what information is not noteworthy. There are times where, well, every second of every day we're bombarded with everything around us, smartphones, the internet, and everything that's on TV. Um, and there are definitely times where I feel as a mother and as a college student that just everything gets to be too much. <laughs> the ability to absorb, evaluate, and analyze information is vital to academic and personal success. I think one of the things that our jobs as instructors is, is to teach them how to organize that information and how to make sense of that information and how to link that information into a compelling story with a big picture perspective so that if you see it as a bunch of disjointed facts that have to be committed to memory, then of course it's information overload. But when you see it as a jigsaw puzzle where all the pieces fit together, then it's not information overload because all of those pieces are essential to understanding the bigger picture. We learn best by actively engaging with the subject we are studying. We're gonna look at something, we're gonna reflect on the, uh, the truth or falseness of that. That's about the only way we can do uh, thinking in our culture now and remain sane. So that's uh, one of the things we try to do in my classes and, and seminars a good way to uh, give it that reflection and, and negotiate that meaning. Designed to encourage active engagement with a subject or a text, a seminar is a unique and highly effective means of gaining, expanding, and sharing knowledge and skills on almost any subject. What I like about being in a seminar is um, I get to hear other students' opinions, um, what they think about the topic. Um, sometimes I believe in something, but when I hear other students what they think, it changes what I believe in. They realize that the group uh, is more important than any one individual, and they will ask questions of other folks uh, to get them involved in the conversation. So there's a lot of um, uh, group support and group progress there, group meaning making that, ha that happens really well. I would say a seminar is really important, especially at the beginning of the of the year when you're starting out. It's really a good social tool to get to know more people in your classroom. I never got a chance to hear anybody else's opinion until seminar. And also sometimes when we say things out loud or when we talk, just end up talking about it ourselves, sometimes that's when it fully clicks in our brain and then we understand it by saying it out loud. But if you're just writing about it in paper, just you and the professor or if you're researching about it, who's going to read it? Only the professor, you're not going to get to hear other students' opinions. In a seminar, a small group of students gather in a circle and explore a subject in open, free-form discussion. It's a completely different level of engagement. You can read in a passive way, just kind of listen uh, you know, as you read the material. But in the seminars, you have to read in a more active way because you're called upon to respond to it. You can't just uh, gloss over it. You're going to expect it to make some observations about the reading. There is no official moderator. Sometimes the instructor will join the group, but the instructor is not the leader. The seminars are all about just getting all the ideas out in the open about what you're trying to learn about. For a seminar to work most effectively, it's essential that all participants are well prepared to discuss the subject matter. Uh, when they walk in the door on seminar day, my students need to have a set of answers to some questions that I had posted ahead of time. Um, and to answer those questions, they will need to have read the articles that were assigned. Um, and really, the best students will annotate the articles. They'll mark them up. Um, they'll highlight the, uh, the most important parts. and. Uh, and often make notes to themselves in the margins. Um, and, uh, and so when those students um, arrive on seminar day, they're better prepared um, for a discussion. Start by reading or viewing the texts that present the subject matter. To prepare for a seminar, I do the assigned reading and annotate. 
That's my biggest preparation is I mark up whatever I'm reading like crazy. <laughs> I will sometimes annotate or place sticky notes inside the, the book and highlight because it makes it easier for me to go back when we're doing the seminar and relate to the book. Take notes, investigate the writer's background and the intended audience. I definitely put question marks, say, what did you guys think about this? I'm very confused on this part or just generally I don't think you need to fully grasp the information before a seminar, but to prepare, you just need to make sure that you've read it and come with questions. What is the writer trying to tell me? Does the writer provide evidence? Is it valid? What is he trying to say to me? Uh, and why is he trying to say it? And who is this guy anyway? Why should I listen to him? Now you're ready for the seminar. This one is on UFOs. Here's what to do to make the seminar collaborative and productive for everyone. You know, in the Condon Report, um, in the first column, there's a line that says, we have no evidence of secrecy concerning UFO reports. Identify the main points. Uh, what has been miscalled secrecy has been no more than an intelligent policy of delaying and releasing data so that the public does not become confused by premature publication of incomplete studies of reports. Paraphrase the writer's meaning. So basically they're saying they're not hiding the information from us, they just wait a while to kind of give it to us because they don't think the general public is ready for it. Point to specific passages to illustrate and support your understanding. On page 130, Paintner says physical evidence is the key to everything. Connect the writer's ideas to those of other participants or other texts. When I was taking anthropology, um, we talked a lot about for example, like cave art. It's really, really important to be able to go and see the cave art and be able to um, really be in that situation and find these tangible pieces that you can have. Challenge ideas. So um, you were just saying that uh, how U UFOs, there's so much question about it, that gives it grounds for, for research. Um, but I'm not so sure that just because we don't know about something that makes that something worthy of research. I mean, there's got to be something that we could gain from it. Encourage alternative interpretations. But what if, I mean, there's life out there and they're just not as advanced as we are or they're less advanced than we are, so maybe the whole UFO thing is just not necessarily true because, yeah, maybe there's life out there, but they probably can't make it to Earth just yet. Listen, be sure you understand the ideas of others. And I think what I caught throughout the whole article was that his main point is that we have to go back to how we are studying about UFOs. Find ways to include everyone in the discussion. In the Condon report he talks about where to investigate these UFO sightings that you wouldn't need a government agency, you wouldn't need to create a government agency. Sabrina, I was just wondering, what do you think about that? Do you think we would need a government agency to investigate these? Affirm, summarize, and paraphrase the ideas of others. So. Ariel, I think what you're trying to say is that one of the reasons why uh, UFO research has gone down or is maybe not as popular right now is simply because uh, scientists don't actually want to spend the time doing it. Is that what you're saying? Ask clarifying questions. So what you're saying is that religion has a lot to do with your personal feelings about UFOs? And of course, respect everyone at the table and their ideas. Really? I mean, how stupid and closed-minded can someone be? That's just like... It blows my mind you can't even give any credence. I mean, come on, really, look, there's scientific fact behind all this. It's just stupid. I can't even believe it right now. I'm sorry, uh, I lost my temper. You know, I just, I really care about this stuff, you know, so I'm just, I, I really apologize, I lost my temper there. Stay on topic. Limit your contributions to only what furthers the discussion. I'm reading these articles. Um, I saw I started watching Star Trek after I was reading them. And I watched this episode where they had this confrontation with these, these other aliens and stuff. And so they ended up having like to destroy the ship. And they got me thinking like about the future weapons. And so who knows, maybe we'll end up being the alien someday, you know, going over to other planets and taking them over with our new weapons. And then like how we're gonna start applying them into society and stuff and how our society is gonna grow from that, and who knows, maybe we'll. And I thought it was just great how we're making all these advances in these, in, in weaponry, and then like how we're...
Remember, the goal of a seminar is to deepen everyone's understanding of the text and subject matter and to develop so critical to thinking skills. The most valuable part for me is I think it makes students have a richer understanding of the material. But also, I think um, sometimes I'll see there are some remarks that students make that I think is really very insightful and certainly things I haven't heard before or maybe haven't thought about myself. They are reading into uh, with some depth into a topic and they are um, applying what they have been discussing in class to specific research. I think that they, they make connections that we would not have made if we didn't do the seminar. I think it's helpful for the future as well because in jobs you're going to be you're going to be needing to know how to interact with others give your opinions. If you don't like something, stand up for it, you know? I would definitely say in a field such as musical theater, you have to be on your toes very often. You have to be able to speak for yourself quickly and uh, at a moment's notice. And I think seminars keep your brain sharp and keep you, uh, keep you learning those communication skills every single day. So. For me personally as an instructor, uh, I value the opportunity to, to read about a topic in greater detail and then to um, have a discussion with students about what they perceived prior to reading the research and then after. This is how we've made meaning in our culture forever. And why we got away from that uh, is beyond me, but seminar is a way to bring back that very egalitarian, very demo democratic way of, of looking at meaning making to our culture. This quarter is my first time having a seminar and I really liked it. It really gave me a chance to express what I think, interact with other students. It got us closer, like everybody started knowing, talking to each other, it was nice.